Hey everyone, so today's video is us sharing our first presentation on medical medium information and also our first YouTube video. Yeah. So at our church, we slowly share our healing journey with everyone there and eventually got to the point where they were like, hey, why don't you do a presentation and that way everyone can hear it all together and ask questions about it. Um, so that, that's what we did and that's what we're sharing with you. Yeah, so the, the video you're about to see is us at church presenting to the congregation on medical medium, his information, and how it helped us. So you'll get to hear our story, you'll get to hear a lot about Epstein-Barr virus, um, some of the unforgiving for, the foods to stay away from, and then at the end we, uh, we get together with the congregation and we make celery juice together. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll learn about celery juice, you'll learn about uh, heavy metals, the heavy metal detox smoothie, and then at the end a lot of the congregation had a lot of different questions. Um, stick around to the end because you'll have frequently asked questions and those might be some of your questions. Yeah, and a lot of people seem very interested so uh, we will be checking in, seeing how they're doing, seeing if that celery juice, heavy metal smoothie is helping, helping them out and we encourage you guys to also ask us questions so mm -hmm. feel free to comment below and ask us any questions. Um, Comments are welcome too, yeah. um, if it's something that's helped you in your, your healing journey as well. Please so, share, yeah. Yeah, please share and we hope you enjoy this information. Alright, so I'm pretty excited to be here today to share all this wonderful information with you guys. There's a lot of questions every Sunday when we come in here on what we're doing, why, why we eat the way we eat, and so we're honored to be here to kind of explain some of those things and explain exactly uh, what's going on. So uh, about four years ago in 2015, I was on a trip to Mexico and I came back and I was sick. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I had vertigo, I had tingling and numbness throughout my body. Uh, my vision was blurred, my hearing was affected, and it was odd, because I'd never been sick before. I never really went to the doctor for much. And when I got back from, well, first off, in Mexico, I was so sick the last day I was there, I had to be taken in the ambulance to the hospital. And when I got back, it was continuing that journey, trying to figure out what is going on, why I'm so sick, why I'm dealing with these symptoms. And this went on for about a year and a half, where I couldn't get off the couch. Basically lived a year and a half on the couch, couldn't get off. Every time I got up, I had this vertigo feeling where I needed to sit back down. And it was, it was odd to me because my whole life, if anything had happened to me, I would go to the doctor. And the doctor would tell me what was wrong with me and have a solution for the problem. Well, it, it wasn't really the case with, with me and what I was dealing with. I went from Kaiser to UCSF to um, Stanford, and no one could figure out what was wrong with me. The best explanation was you have anxiety which was, was odd. You know, I find myself to be a little social, and before that I had uh, worked a career where I'd go, go and do talks to people, big audiences, about solar and some of the benefits of solar energy. So it was odd to me that I was being told I had anxiety. So fast forward, a year and a half later, still no answers, and one day we got a call from my cousin, in San Diego, who also goes to the Community of Christ in El Cajon. And she, she called us one day and said, our prayers have been answered. We didn't really understand what that meant or, or why that was the case, but my mom, she bought the book, this medical medium book here, 
And this book explains chronic illness and mystery disease and all of the, the issues behind it and why doctors can't figure out these mystery symptoms and why doctors are misdiagnosing people today. And unfortunately, people are losing their gallbladders and they're losing their lymph nodes and stuff like thyroid. thyroids because they don't quite have the answers for everything. And in his books, he lays out mystery illness, all of the symptoms and conditions, and how to heal these things. And so what we did was we learned first off what was going on with me. So in the book, he explains about this virus, and it's called Epstein-Barr. And you might have heard of it. You might have even had it on a doctor test, and the doctor might have told you you have mono. Well, mono is stage two. Stage one is contacting the virus, and you can contact it from anything. You could be at a restaurant and the guy doesn't wash his hands when he's cooking your food, and now you have this virus. You could get it from sharing a cup of something with someone. So it's, it's very easily contracted, and um, there's four stages of it. So stage one is getting it contracted. Stage two is mono. Stage three, the virus actually makes its way into your thyroid. And so that's why people today are dealing with so many thyroid issues, is their thyroid becomes inflamed. And typically it's inflamed because there's something causing that inflammation, right? Just like if your liver was inflamed or another part of your, your body was inflamed, it's typically because something's causing that inflammation. And so what we've learned is there's four stages. Stage three was the thyroid. Stage four, it actually makes its way into your central vagus nerve, which is the nerve that runs along the spine of your back. And when it gets there, it starts to wreak havoc on, on your, uh, your brain, and you, you start to develop neurological symptoms, like the vertigo, like the tingles and numbness, um, like the off balance. All the symptoms I, were ha I was having were caused from this virus in the various stages. Um, do you want to talk about like the diet? Yeah, so when we got the book and started, like Ben's mom got the book, gave it to me and was like, oh my gosh, actually you have to read about the FC bar chapter. It's everything that Ben's going through. And so I read it and I was like, Ben, <laughs> uh, we, I think we figured out like how to fix this. And so read through it, read through, you know, the diet and what we need to intake to help heal. And it's all through taking in fruits, vegetables, um, herbs, and wild foods. So that next day, we basically, we started doing the celery juice. Um, so we did the celery juice every morning, and then we did his 28-day cleanse that he talks about in the medical medium book. And that's for 28 days, you're eating raw fruits and veggies. And that's basically just to like clean up your system, get as much healing foods in there. And within just even two weeks on that, Ben was like able to get off the couch and we were seeing some really great progress. So from there we knew, okay, this is actually doing something. This is moving the needle. Like we weren't, we were doing things that, you know, a year and a half before this that were kind of helping where we were removing sugars, processed foods, things like that, but this was like, oh my gosh, like, so, um, yeah, so now, should I talk about what we do? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to just take a step back, because there's, there's a lot of uh, these trendy diets out there, and there's a lot of trends that you might find on the internet, you know, when someone's sick, the first place they go is the internet, right? And that's that's part of the part of the problem. There's so much information out there. What do you do with it, right? And what's nice is all this information is laid out in his book. So you buy his book, you read the book, and it explains the celery juice, how to consume it every morning on an empty stomach, 16 ounces. It explains the lemon water in the morning, just like Carol was saying. It explains this heavy metal detox smoothie that removes metals from your body. So he lays it all out so it's very easy to learn and very easy to understand. Yeah, and it's a lot of information and it's a whole new way of learning how to eat. 
So take it by baby steps. Maybe you're just trying the celery juice and going from there. For us, we were all in because we wanted to do whatever it took to get him better. Um, so what our day looks like is we'll wake up and we'll do our lemon water. We'll do 32 ounces of lemon water and that's to flush out the liver, what Carol was talking about. Because when you're, when you go to bed and you go to sleep, that's when the liver's working really hard to clean up all toxins and everything. So it's collecting everything from your body and it's holding on to it. And then the lemon, lemon water helps flush it and release it. So we'll do the lemon water. Once we've completed that, we wait about at least 20 minutes or so, and then we get our 16 ounces of celery juice in. We actually do 32 ounces because we started with 16 and then we've upped it, so now we do 32 ounces in the morning. After the celery juice, um, now while it's summertime, we'll eat some melon. So we'll eat some melon and then we'll do our heavy metal detox smoothie, which we can talk about some more. That's what this but we is. We brought that today. Um, and then lunch will either be a salad or a smoothie, and then um, we'll do dinner. We usually will do a, a cooked meal with maybe it's like potatoes, different veggies, a stir fry. Um, beans, you can have rice, just all sorts of things. And his books have so many great recipes in there too. Like I said, it's a whole new way of learning how to grocery shop and cook, but it's totally worth it. And like I also said, you can take it baby steps at a time as well. Um, okay, so, so uh, what we learned about this Epstein-Barr virus, this bi virus that I had, was that we were feeding it. Yeah. And we were feeding it and allowing it to grow. And what we were feeding it was things that were just in our, a normal American diet, right? We were eating a lot of processed foods. We, were, uh, we both had pretty busy schedules with work and stuff, so we'd grab a pizza on the way home or stop at our favorite hamburger joint. It was, you know, it was convenience. And we had no idea about any of this information and that these things were feeding a virus inside of my body. So we started eliminating these things. So Anthony has a no foods list and it's a list of foods that you should try to stay away from if you're sick or chronically ill and you're trying to heal. And those foods are you know, eggs, dairy, um, gluten, uh, pork, any soy or corn. So most vegans, they can still eat corn or soy. Uh, corn and soy, a lot of it is genetically modified. And so we tend to stay away from GMO foods like corn or soy. Um, and then we stay away from a lot of like the MSGs, the preservatives that you see when you buy, you know, a sports drink or something like that. It might have citric acid in it or it might have natural flavoring in it. And those are a big no-no in Anthony's eyes because they burn out your neurotransmitters in your brain. And your neurotransmitters in your brain need to be sending signals to each other, need to be communicating, need to be letting them know that everything's working okay. So um, we eliminated these things. And as soon as we eliminated all of these foods, we started to see huge, huge, progress. It was like I was going from, every six months I was going from like 50% in my health to like 65. So I was getting 15% jumps every six months. And we've been doing this two and a half years now. So we've been doing this for a very long time and we've seen such good results. We don't think we'll ever stop, you know. So, um, he also talks about the unforgiving four in his book, and these are things that are kind of out of your control. You don't, you don't even realize you come into contact with these things on a daily basis. But those are heavy metals, radiation, DDT. DDT is pesticides, fungicides, insecticides, herbicides. All that stuff is toxic to us. And then the last thing is, is virus, which I just talked about. So a virus in combination with these three environmental toxins cause chronic illness and even cause cancer. Mm -hmm. So 
Epstein Barr isn't the only virus. There's other viruses out there too. So there's like the um, shingles virus. There's uh, the herpes virus. There's the Epstein Barr virus. And then there's like different strands. And then like the Epstein Barr has 60 over 60 different strains of this one virus. And every virus has a different purpose and ends up in a different place in your body. So if you're having thyroid issues. The Epstein bar is made it to your thyroid, and that's what's causing the thyroid issue. Eventually, this virus, if it's not treated, it will make its way to all of your essential organs. It'll sit in your liver and wreak havoc. And the food that you're feeding it is allowing it to grow, mutate, and become stronger. Um, a lot of doctors, when you go into the office, they ask, your, your family's history, right? And they ask the family history so they can tie, they can figure out if your grandma had this disease, well, will you have this disease? And it's not so much that that is being passed from generation to generation, but it's these environmental toxins. So metals, radiation, pesticides, DDT, all that stuff gets passed from generation to generation. Metals, in particular, they sink. You know, if you look at a river stream and you look where gold ends up, it always ends up at the bottom of the stream in the clay. And there's a reason for that, right? And it's because it's heavy. So when metals are in your body, they're doing the same thing. They're sinking. And there's no way to move them out without some of the things that Anthony talks about in this book. Like Carol was saying, there's everything that we need to heal is here on this planet. You know, God put these things here for a reason. And we can all heal from this stuff. And it's just a matter of getting the information out there so people can, can start healing. So. Yeah, can we talk about that? Maybe? Yeah. Okay, so how can you get these metals out of your body, right? Because it's. They're falling from the sky, you're coming in contact from your silverware, aluminum foil, like metals are just unfortunately everywhere. Um, so the heavy metal detox smoothie helps remove that in a safe way. I'm sure you've all probably heard of other ways of having how to get metals out of your body, but this way is the safest way to do it. Um, and it includes five key ingredients. So the key ingredients that, um, what they do is they work together to remove these metals. And you don't have to necessarily do it in the smoothie. It could just be that you're consuming them all within a 24 hour period. So the first one is cilantro. And then uh, wild blueberries are the other, the second piece. Then you have dulse, which is a type of seaweed. Dulse, D-U-L-S-E. And then uh, spirulina, which is an algae and then uh, barley grass juice powder. And um, the barley grass juice powder and the spirulina, there are certain brands that Anthony recommends, so we can, we can help direct you guys to that if you're interested in making the smoothies. Um, but those are the key ingredients to removing the metals. The smoothie also includes bananas and oranges, so you have some substance in there and some flavor. Um, but yeah, we consume that every single day and we haven't gotten tired of it yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's what we do to remove the heavy metals. And, and so why the smoothie works so well is the, the seaweed, there's seaweed in it. And how seaweed works in the ocean is the seaweed act, acts as a sponge. So you're essentially putting this smoothie in your system and it's acting like a sponge, so it's soaking up all of those metals. All those metals that are sitting at the bottom of your liver, it's soaking them up and it's taking them out. And so that's the purpose of this, this, this smoothie and why the seaweed is so powerful. Yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. It's a, it's a blueberry question. Yes. Um, the difference between the wild blueberry and the, the normal cultivated blueberry, yep. I, I, I'm assuming it's not like one is 100% and the other is 0%, but is it 
degrees of effectiveness or usefulness? Yeah, so the wild blueberry is definitely much more powerful, as Carol was saying, that it withstands like extreme harsh conditions. Like it could be burned down and it will grow back. It's like that powerful. Um, regular blueberries are of course still nutritious, but they don't hold that powerful factor as the wild blueberries. Um, the, the wild are wild. You know, the blueberries that are grown in the garden, they, they don't have to survive these these harsh conditions, right? They're being fed, they're being fertilized, they're getting everything that they need to grow, where the wild stuff doesn't have that stuff, so they just, it has to grow wild. It has to pull whatever it can from the soil just to survive. So sort of survival of the fittest. Yep. <laughs> exactly. That's why the bear's so crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and um, even just any wild food, foods is super beneficial to your health as well. And we do the, we get our blueberries from Sprouts, they're wild. Wayman's Wild Blueberries, and that's the blueberries we get. In the frozen section. The frozen section. Yeah. yeah. What about the new mentioned lemon juice? So there's organic, like glass bottles of lemon juice. But then you said ascorbic acid, so would you recommend that or would you recommend the lemons, like the actual lemon? Just taking some water with a, a lemon and squeezing it in there. A whole lemon? Yeah, we'll do like a whole lemon in about 32 ounces. Okay. Yeah, and just water. make sure it's an organic lemon. Okay. I don't know that already Yeah. So, one of the most important tools that we have in this healing toolkit is the celery juice. Okay, and so celery juice is extremely powerful for anybody. If you're still out there and you're if you're eating a standard American diet, that's okay. You know, the celery juice will still help you. Okay. In your stomach, you have hydrochloric acid. When you get your tests done at the doctor, it's your HCL count. Okay? And your hydrochloric acid in your stomach is made up of a blend, a blend of seven different acids. Okay? And we get six of these acids on a daily basis just with what we consume. The missing blend, that missing piece, the seventh piece, you get from celery juice. So that's why people with digestive issues are recovering so quick from the celery juice. And then you've got everybody with uh, endocrine system, so your glands, stomach with problems with your glands, so adrenal glands, um, and your thyroid gland, those are some, some glands that we're, we're dealing with issues on. And cell reduce has plant hormones in it, right? And if you have thyroid issues, your thyroid is, is is kind of going out of control and you need to regulate it somehow. And the way you can regulate your hormones is with celery juice. So that's another big, big benefit. Uh, fatigue is an issue that, that I deal with all the time. It seems like three o'clock comes around and that's quitting time because I'm ready for a nap, you know? So it's, it's what we've learned is we started doing celery juice twice a day. So when the celery juice book came out, we had no idea the powers of celery juice. And once we read the book, we said we've got to we've got to add more of this to our life. So so we did thir now we do 32 ounces in the morning, 32 ounces at night. Okay? And he explains if you're chronically ill, if you're dealing with major fatigue issues, if um, if that's the case, then you know, celery juice could be that, that boost you need. Can I add something? Yeah. So, there are people that will try it and they're it's really sensitive to their stomachs and they can't handle even the 16 ounces. So if you try it and you're like, whoa, this is like too powerful for me because it's upsetting my stomach, you can start with a smaller dosage. Um, say it's two ounces or it's four ounces and then you can slowly up that every, say, week or few weeks or so. Um, we found that that is helpful for other people. Yeah, so those are just some of the things celery can, celery juice can do for you guys. We, uh, I think Gail brought her 
juicer today and we brought some celery juice and we were gonna juice some up so you can try it out and give it a little taste and then if you have questions about celery juice or what juicer to get or how some how to do it you know we'll, we're here all the time so feel free to come up and ask us questions so if you're drinking that much celery juice how much celery do you buy no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. We started buying it in the big box. So go to the store and buy a big box of 36 yeah. you, bunches. You talk to the produce guys. And, and now I, I just started three weeks ago just for the fun of it to see how this would work. I haven't changed anything else in my diet. I just said, okay, I'm going to try this. And, and I just I just buy a stock of celery. I'll get like three for three days and then I'll go back in and get three more. Well, that's what I Because we're like the store all the time. So one bunch is roughly 16 ounces. Yeah, so we, we, we used to buy a lot of our celery at the farmer's market, and we were like the celery people. <laughs> we'd, go, we'd walk out of there with like 20, 30 celery. Our, our cart. <laughs> so, uh, but eventually we found this, this market down the street, and you go in and pay 54 bucks, they give you a discount because I'm buying so much celery at one time. So if you can find something like that, that's the way to save some money on, on your celery. Do you dilute the celery juice any with water or anything like that, or just take it straight? That's a good question. So this, this 16 ounces of celery, the reason it's, it's 16 ounces and the reason you don't want to dilute it or add anything to it is it's, it's medicine. Celery, celery is an, an herb. And so when you consume herbs today, like in your tea, do you take what's left in the tea, that fiber that's left in the tea, and eat that? No. So you want to remove that, you want to extract it, and then you don't want to dilute it because of celery juice's journey. So it has to go in your mouth, down your esophagus, down your small intestines, into your colon, your large intestines, through the hepatic uh, portal vein to your liver. And then once it makes its way to the liver, it can then send the celery juice into your blood where it can make its way to your brain and then it will eventually make its way to your gallbladder. And so today people are having a lot of gallbladder issues. The reason gallbladders are so affected today is because of liver issues. Our livers are overburdened with, with toxins, and when the livers get overburdened and have nowhere else to send those toxins, they send it to your skin, or they send it to your gallbladder. And that's why today people run around with skin issues, and their gallbladder is being removed because the, the heat creates gallstones and uh, gall, gallbladder inflammation. But you can tell, you can see the journey is long. The celery has to make it to all these places before it actually can make its way to your liver and your brain. So it's important to just do the this, this celery juice. That's that's it. Nothing nothing needed to to, to add it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So adding anything affects its purpose and also don't eat or drink anything 20 minutes before or 20 minutes after because you want like a clear path for that celery juice and nothing to get in its way otherwise it'll affect it so yeah, yeah. Um, my, my juicer's in a butt to clean right and for the instructions and also celery is extremely common it says that you shouldn't drink juice two days after. So you you can juice it today for today and tomorrow and then rejuice. Mm -hmm. So are you guys juicing every single day or do you juice once a week for the whole week? So we juice every day. Um, it's best to drink once you juice it. He says it's best to drink within 24 hours because it starts to lose its effectiveness. Um, so we do it every morning. You can also do it the night before if you don't have time to do it in the morning and then that way you're just ready to go. Um, 
I would just recommend like sealing it like in a bottle or in a mason jar. That way it stays fresh. So I'm just, I've got some other things, I'm sorry. Like there's Urban Remedy, like in Whole Foods 365, and they sell a lot of free juice celery. So would you recommend against that because it's shelf life? If they juiced it that day, <clears throat> then it's okay. And there's a lot of like uh, high pressure pasteurization where they might do something two weeks ago and they high pressure pasteurize it and then you're con you're consuming it and it still tastes the same to you but the nutritional value is not is not and we do buy juice from stores we make them clean out the thing and run the salary alone and they're glad to sell it because they charge like four dollars and they pay it well, mostly when we're out in the country and we're using our guy and we're all in the store. But, uh, so, so I, I'm sorry to introduce These are my parents back here. This is, this is Bernie and Barbara. And they both were extremely affected by this, this diet and everything we do. And they are also on it. And they've been on it just as long as, as we have. And uh, they suffer from their own issues, thyroid and gallbladder removal. And, and so we, we're convinced that if we would have had this information back then, it might have saved a, a thyroid and a gallbladder. So. Uh, this country was really built on corn. You know, what has happened to the corn now that we can't eat it? The government subsidizes it. It's Super complex, but. Yeah, the well, corn. I think the point to make is corn used to be this great food. Right. You know, yeah. we ate it all through South America, Central America, the United States. But since Montana has changed the corn, yeah. it is no longer beneficial to us. It actually feeds the virus. Yeah, like in the early 1900s is when it started getting sprayed with like tons of pesticides, and that's what kind of changed the corn and viruses saw it as, as a food. And so that's why now even um, sometimes organic corn can be seen as a food for viruses. Um, you know, I can't remember saying how the dominant context in the world wisdom it says eat the fruits and fruits of the season. Mm -hmm. But with us importing so much of our fruit and vegetables from Chile and everything, so <clears throat> stick with what's in season locally, do you, how do you determine you know what, I, I thought of that same thing, you know, that you're bringing up, and, and I don't know the answer. I think it's subject to our own interpretation. I, I think fresh is the yeah. Yeah. Fresh. I mean, still, I mean, just because it's supposedly in season, I mean, I've bought some rock hard peaches that you weren't even know about. Yeah, but so yeah, is not a whole little well, bit. Yeah. Right. So you know, if, if you get it, it's, it's relatively fresh. Yeah. yeah, Anthony, what he talks about is back in the days when we had kings and queens. Those kings and queens would, would not be sick, where all the, 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 the middle class people or lower class people were getting sick because all they had to eat were, was meat. You know, and they weren't able to preserve food through those winter months where the kings and queens could have figs imported, could have oranges imported, so they, they stayed the healthiest. And it was because they had access to these foods that they wouldn't have access to during those winter months. Yeah. And yeah. it's still ongoing. The one percenters have their own chefs, they have their own land where they grow their own vegetables. So it hasn't changed. More questions? We have to take the questions before I start juicing. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. I, I have to tell you, if, if you have any little guys in your life, they love doing this. <laughs> well, you know with the juices too, uh, the first year and a half, or two years, we would buy juicers at... Check out our Instagram handle. It's that.root.life. We'll also link that below so you can easily access that. And of course, if you have questions, 
please feel free to ask and comment below. We're happy to help you guys out because uh, we know it's not easy and we're, we're here to help you. And, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Thanks, guys.